The first gameplay stream for Monster in Our Wilds was showcased this morning, well, morning for me, and we got to see a ton of new gameplay related things that we didn't know or hadn't seen before. To keep this video from getting too long and boring, I'm just going to pick out 25 things that I noticed in the first hunt of today's livestream to go over with you guys. Let's jump right into it. Number 1. Armor is no longer gender locked. This was confirmed by Ryozo very early on in the gameplay, and many people have been waiting for this option, so you know it's finally here. Number 2. No charms. Now while this isn't a guarantee, I did notice there's not a charm slot in the equipment menu, although I wouldn't be surprised to see it come later as this may just be a demo feature. Number 3. The item bar has been really minimized to not eat up too much of the screen, which isn't bad visually, however I personally liked at least seeing the next item on either side of my current item, as I know it can help with knowing where to scroll before you open your item bar. However, here we can also see that it is fully expanded, allowing the hunter to quickly go through his entire pouch much more fluidly. There's also a timer shown on how long the mantle has until it's ready to be used again, which I think is just an awesome quality of life feature. Number 4, the new health and stamina bar are looking super cool. I love this design. It's very different from what we've seen in previous games, and personally, again, I really like it. However, I do wish it took up a bit more of the screen. I personally am definitely a fan of the longer health bars like we had in Rise and some of the older generation games. The timer is also no longer attached to the health and stamina bars and is now on the opposite side of the screen, and it actually shows a countdown clock as well, so you no longer have to guess based on the hands of the clock how much time you have left in your hunt. Number 5, it's been confirmed that the quest will begin after our first hit on the target monster. Now this could be huge for speedrunning, as it may allow for things like traps, bombs, environmental stuff, etc. to be set up before the quest timer officially starts, which could lead to some incredibly unique strategies and setups to be made to further reduce times. Number 6, I noticed large dung pods. These are used to split up entire packs of monsters, whereas the regular dung pods will only target a single monster. Number 7, wedge beetles are back. These were great for vertical traversal in Monster Hunter World, and in another game without wire bugs, I'm definitely happy to see these guys back. Number 8, mounting the monster can cause wounds to appear. Other than that, mounting seems very similar to World where we'll get a nice big knockdown as well as having to stab and avoid the monster throwing us off. Number 9, small monsters will attack while the monster is downed off of a mount. Now this has been in the game before, it's definitely not game breaking, but it's just something to be aware of when hunting in Wild's dynamic environment. Number 10, we get to see another turf war. Balahara has appeared during this inclemency period which leads to an epic turf war. Number 11, if you're stuck in a quicksand pit and you can't get out, you can mount your secret and easily escape. Number 12, baiting monsters. We can see the hunter attack and bait Ray Dao into coming to help him beat up Doshaguma. We also get a look at a brand new pod type in Wilds called Luring Pods. These seem to be replacing the Challenger Mantle as a way to get monsters to follow you aggressively. This is shown by a direct red aggro line, very similar to what we saw in Behemoth and Safajiva hunts back in World. Number 13, the Boulder Traps are returning. Now we have of course seen these before, but these can also spawn at a higher rate depending on the season of the locale that you're hunting in. The fourteenth thing I noticed was that Great Thunderbugs can be used as a makeshift shock trap. This is super dope, another environmental hazard to use to our advantage. Also you won't always need to bring shock traps and or materials to craft more in order to stop the monster. Number fifteen, here on the side you can briefly see a new endemic life called Vigor Mantle Bugs. These are endemic life that, I assume, will give you effects akin to their namesake likely adding some extra padding to your health bar, allowing you to tank more hits without actually losing your normal health. Number 16, I noticed a new focus strike for Greatsword. Up until now, we've only really seen one focus strike per weapon to destroy wounds. This one is looking a lot more fluid, taking less time to hit and destroy Dosha Guma's wounds. Number 17, the SOS Flare can now call in support hunters. 
These are AI hunter helpers that are, again, not real multiplayer hunters, but NPCs that can help you in your quest. If you're playing offline or if you don't want to play with real players and you need some extra help, you can use these guys to help you out on your hunt. Now we do know that you can turn these guys on or off, so if you still want the authentic multiplayer experience, you'll still have that option, and you can choose to not use an SOS flare if you still want to hunt solo. Going further on these AI hunters, while our main hunter is attacking Chatacabra, the NPC hunters actually continue to beat up on Dolce Guma. Now, I'm hoping these guys aren't too strong because then people would just be able to call them in and have them clear the quest for them, but that remains to be seen. Number 19, Vine Traps Return. Again, this is nothing new, but just another feature showcased today. They also stated during the live stream that the AI hunters are much smarter, and upon seeing the trap dropped, they will actually start coming towards the hunter to help lure Doshaguma into the trap. Number 20, we get a look at some bowgun ammos. We see some standard ammos that we've seen before, like normal, pierce, spread, armor, recovery, and thunder ammo. We also now see that the pierce and spread level 1s can be used infinitely, just like normal ones in the older games. For me personally, I think this is a really nice change. Now, it's not going to be super game-breaking, as it won't matter much in the late game, but it should make early game bow gunning a lot less tedious. The stronger ammos, you'll notice, still do have a cap. When the LBG rapid fire mode comes in, I noticed that the first clip was shot normally with the high recoil into a normal reload, but the second clip had that lower stance, longer recovery animation of the final shot. I'm not entirely sure what will cause this if you can enter the stance. It didn't seem to deal more damage, so I'm not sure why you would actively choose to have a longer recovery animation. But learning to play around these longer animations will likely be a crucial part of optimally playing light bowgun. Number 22, as Doshaguma reaches low health, we see it go to a den to sleep, and the large barrel bombs come out. They actually decided not to use these in this stream, they said they'd save them for tomorrow, but I'm sure you all know how these bad boys work on wake up hits. The AI hunters also know not to attack the sleeping monster, so you'll be free to do your own massive wake-up hits with no worries of interruption. Number 23, the thunder ammo seems to shoot, hit the monster, and then burst into multiple hits. In World, all elemental ammos were piercing ammos, and there's no sign of that right now, but I would hope to see that return for our longer, lengthier monsters. Number 24, Doshaguma is slain. Now this wasn't the most thrilling or beautiful run, and we did get to see a ton of amazing features. We knew this before, but the monster carcasses now have a hitbox, so no more warping through them while carving. The final thing I picked out is that you can opt to immediately end the quest, or you can continue exploring the vast open world of the windswept plains, which I think is awesome. This could make every hunt feel like an expedition, and with the addition of pop-up camps and the ability to begin new quests straight from the field, you'll always be able to restock and head out on another quest with no interruptions. So that's all for this first Doshiguma hunt. The live stream did go on for almost another hour after this, so I definitely encourage you all to go check it out for yourself if you haven't already. I'll be sure to link it down in the description as well as in the pinned comment. If you did make it this far in the video, dropping a thumbs up down below would be super appreciated, as it's a totally free way to support this video and my channel. If you're new here, new to Monster Hunter, and you're craving more Monster Hunter Wilds content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. This channel is going to be the best place for sets, guides, tutorials, and much, much more as Monster Hunter Wilds comes out, and subscribing is the best way to make sure you never miss an upload. With all that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I wish you all a good day, and happy hunting.